All right, thanks everyone for being here today. We ju just wrapped up our 10th practice for camp. I like what I'm seeing out there so far, a lot of energy. Uh, guys are working hard, a lot of, a lot of hard coaching. Uh, sense of urgency, attention to detail is there, so we're making progress. We had our first scrimmage on Saturday. A lot of good things on offense, defense, and special teams. Um, you know, we had some guys step up and make some plays in all three phases. Went through a lot of situations, third down, red zone, two minute. A lot of special teams deal, so um, we got a lot of work done. Uh, the quarterbacks played well, competed. They both made, they all made plays, all three of them made plays. Um, so, you know, we have to get better this week. And so that's what, that's what we're doing. So I'll open up for questions. Anybody has anything for me? Coach, we know scrimmages are a part of everything, but how much weight goes into the outcome of a scrimmage compared to game day? Quite a bit, but because you know it's it's the closest to the, to a game that we can get. You know, some guys do well in, in meetings and practice; they have a hard time taking it and carrying over to games. So we have to, uh, you know, they those scrimmage reps sometimes carry a little bit more weight. It's not everything; it's a it's a it's a part of the picture, though, part of the puzzle. We're trying to figure out, you know, who can help us and what their roles are. Going to be. Yeah, you are. Mel, I'm wondering when when you get to this point where you're at ten practices in and you got one scrimmage, do you have in, in mind? Is there is there a separation point? Do you see some separation from some guys, or do you kind of keep it going all the way up to game week? Well, we have another scrimmage coming up this Saturday, and then that's you know and then. Um, there starts to become the separation becomes more clear typically after that, after that second scrimmage and then uh, midway through the next week is when we start to kind of uh, develop the scout teams and because uh, you know you can't rep you know threes and fours I mean, game week you just don't have enough time you know the 20 hour rule we can't be out there all day so you know where the guys out so um, you know at that point you know it's kind of, you know, here's the too deep, you know, for now. You know, I've had guys in the past like, uh, you know, that maybe a true freshman that started off on a scout team at the beginning, beginning of the season end up starting for us at the end of the season. So, I mean, it's not, it's not the end, you know, for a player when he, you know, if he's a scout team guy after the second scrimmage. But, you know, we have to make some decisions. So. And I was wondering, you know, particularly with the offensive skill positions, kind of the playmakers, with, with the losses you had, particularly in the past game, um, this past offseason, just kind of who you see emerging, because there's obviously roles to, to fill. Like I said, all three quarterbacks made plays. I mean, uh, Trey Mosley you know, was making plays every day. Uh, Montoy Foster is coming up big every day. Um, Chris and Fitzpatrick is, is looking good. You know, he's a big, tall. Receiver who has developed, he's doing a great job on special teams. Also, uh, Gates is making plays. Glover is making plays. Tyrell Henry's making plays. Our tight ends are, are uh, you know, Malik Carr is a is a big target. He makes plays when he's out there. Um, you know, our, our backs are making plays. You know, Carter, you know, broke a, you know, a long one. Uh, he broke another long one today. Um, so. We don't. I don't think we have a shortage of playmakers. You know, we just, it's going to be about execution and staying healthy. We got to keep. We got to get the horses to the race. We got to keep them out there. Mel, developing quarterbacks in a scrimmage situation. Do you have coaches on the field? Are they on the sideline, up in the booth, and simulating exactly what you can do during a game? The coaches are on the sideline, except for Coach Cap is on the field usually for scrimmages, but everybody else is on the sideline, uh, up in the booth or both. And last week, Jay was talking about the possibility that he would use two quarterbacks early in the season and evaluate it that way. Is mm -hmm. that something you're thinking of? It's possible, yep. Um, the uh, kicking and punting situation, I was wondering if there's any separation there, obviously with not much experience in, in, in either uh, position. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure how much separation there is right now, but like Jonathan, Kim walks in the door with a with a very strong leg, like very strong. Um, and Rusty's doing a good job wrestling. Um, you know, Hank Pepper is back healthy as our snapper, so that's huge for us. I mean, you don't 
you don't know you don't have a snapper until you don't have one, you know. Uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, Eckley and, and uh, O'Shaughnessy are competing like crazy. So, you know, we'll be productive there. I think we'll be, we'll be uh, you know, the, the kicking situation should be much improved. Well, kind of a mid-camp question. When you look, usually this time of the year, you got so many hot days and it's 80, 90 plus degrees. You guys had a little bit more of a cooler camp. Is that something that, as a coach, you would rather have guys push and strain through the heat? Or do you want to kind of get different experiences, whether it be rain, whether it be colder, warmer? Yeah, we have to be prepared to play and, and everything. I mean, a couple of years ago, we knew we were going to Miami, so during camp, it wasn't hot enough. You know, we, we went indoors and turned the heat up, you know, to get that work. Um, so, you know, we'll do whatever's necessary to make sure the guys are prepared, you know. The number one thing, we have to, we have to be as best conditioned, you know, and so mentally and physically. So, um, I mean, I mean, I think, I mean, it's easy for me to come up here and say, I wish it was 90 degrees out there and the guys were, you know, cramping up and we had the IV guys and all that, but I really don't feel that way anymore. I mean, that's, I used to feel that way. Like, that's the only way you could get guys ready. But nowadays, I mean, we just, we just have a lot more information, uh, you know, with our sports science people and you know, Bill Burghardt and all the load management stuff. And, you know, we got heart rate monitors on these guys, and we know if they're in shape, if they're not in shape, and how fast they recover and things like that. And, you know, so we try to keep their loads manageable so they can play fast. We're playing fast. We have more guys playing faster in practice uh, than we've had the last three years. You know, more guys hitting high speed reps uh, more often throughout the practices. So um, that's, that's very important. I feel like we're in, we're in, we're in pretty good shape right now. We have to stay healthy and continue to get better and, and, and practice hard and be physical. But we have to we got to we got to keep guys on the field so we can get better. We have enough good players to be good. We just don't have enough good players like to you know have a lot of guys hurt and still think we're going to be good. Mel, um, you mentioned to us about the offseason with some intentional sort of team building and leadership uh, initiatives and whatnot. I'm just wondering at this stage of camp, are there any new faces that you're seeing sort of bear fruit in that regard? Other than, you know, we know Trey and JD and guys like that, but. You mean stepping up as leaders? Yeah, that, that have that come as a result of those things you guys were intentional about. Um, I'm not sure if there's any, any new faces that kind of stick out to me is that, um, but we, you know, we have, uh, our team chemistry is better. I mean, I, I, I mean, it's just, it's just obvious, you know, um, and we talk every, every single day about being selfless and, you know, we show demonstrations of that every day in practice with, you know, different guys, both sides of the ball, special teams. So, um, and uh, I do, I do hear guys confronting each other, you know, which is important, you know, respectfully. Uh, so it's not always the coaches, you know, having the correct guys and things like that about you know everything. So um, like we had a, we had a, you know, we had a, like I said, we had a scrimmage on Saturday, and and uh, like someone, you know, someone overheard, overheard Hauser. Because uh, both quarterbacks, you know, their units scored early in the scrimmage, and uh, Hauser says to, to Noah, you know, we have we have two, like two two scores. It wasn't like I have one and you have one, or I have I have one, but mine was against the ones, you had one, and yours was against the twos, or I had one, mine was throwing, you, you had one, it was a run, you know, it was just like we have two, which is that says a lot from that position about you know our, our chemistry. At this point, well, obviously, just a couple weeks left here in camp, and then you'll be in, in game week. Is is right now at all still about you guys and evaluating and understanding who fits where, or have you started to mix in any sort of game prep? And if, if not, at what point does that begin, or does that wait till that till that first week? Yeah, I mean, we it's mostly you know about us, but we've we've done our out of season uh, scouting reports, 
So, you know, we have things in our schemes um, that we're teaching that we know that we're going to need for those the first the first few games. Um, and some of that stuff is being introduced in, like, in the meetings and walkthroughs and things like that. But when we're going, you know, right now we don't have really scout teams unless we're doing special teams. Uh, so right now we're just going good on good. We're running our stuff, our typical stuff against our defensive stuff. There's really no game plan. So if you have, but once we go to scout teams, um, you know, then we'll get more specific with that closer to to, uh, to game week. Mel Izzo always talks about leadership from the point guard position. We've seen quarterbacks here who were three-time captains, now leading teams in the NFL. We've seen others who won a boatload of games. We're never a captain. How important is it to get leadership at that position? It's important. I mean, you're running the show, and you have to have the respect of your teammates uh, on both sides of the ball. You know, guys have to believe in you. You have to be accountable. Um, and uh, so I think it's important. Uh, it's, I think it's hard to have a it's hard to have a, a good team if at that position you don't have, you know, at least solid leadership. You know, I've been a part of some good teams where the quarterback might not necessarily have been the leader, um, but he was a respected enough, you know, to uh, you know where guys would play hard for him, and that's the key. Mel, obviously with your extensive experience as a player and coach in the Big Ten, and then the year at Colorado, like, what are your thoughts on adding uh, Washington and Oregon and ex continued expansion to the Big Ten and what seems to be the the Pac-12 crumbling. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good for for the Big Ten. It makes us stronger. Um, you know, when you're recruiting players, you know, high school guys or portal guys, I mean, who you play uh, is a big draw for them in terms of like you just think about what, what type of schedules we're going to have and what type of you know football and what type of competition is going to be week in and week out. Um, you know, so it's a huge stage. It's getting bigger, and we're, you know it's going to be more, even more competitive on the field. It's going to be more competitive in recruiting, uh, and it just makes our league stronger, makes our league better. And it's important. I mean, you would you'd be surprised how many how many players, how many recruits we talk to, and they talk about okay, well, SEC versus Big Ten. It always comes up. Wondered about the nickelback position for you guys. You got a lot. You brought in a lot of different defensive backs, be it young guys that, that were here last year, and and some of the transfers. How, how do you view that position right now? Um, and, and how many guys do you think could you plug and play there? We we practice like we wrap like three or four guys there. I think you always have to have three guys ready to play that position, um, and you need uh, you know you need. Two different types of body types, I think, at that position it was helpful if you if you can if you have it. You know, you need more of a kind of uh, defensive back, a guy that can maybe cover a slot receiver man to man um, in that position, uh, but also can blitz and can get off of a block. You know, on those perimeter runs or the bubble screen game, the RPO game, things like that. And then you also need maybe a bigger hybrid type body, like uh, like Darius Snow, for example, who was a safety who played that position, who plays well in space, but is big enough to, you know, uh, show up in a run game, get off a block. If they put a tight, if they put a big tight end in a slot, you know, to to block, uh, you know, someone who can strike that guy and knock him back and get off the block and finish on the ball. So you need sometimes you need a bigger body, but it's an athletic guy, you know. So um, you know between the the DBs and the, and the hybrid linebacker kind of versatile guys we have. You know, we're repping like four or five guys there. Yeah, I remember that. He was a true freshman. He, he went in there in that COVID year and did well. Yeah, I mean, like it's 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 not it's 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 one of the more difficult uh, spots to play, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it's uh, because like you're a, you're a DB and a linebacker, um, you know. Like if you're playing left corner, I mean, like everything's to your right all the time. Everything is in here, in here, in here. And the corner is not easy to play, but I mean, like 
when you're playing that nickel spot, I mean, you're left, you're right. You know, you got play, you know, plays inside of you, you got plays outside of you. I mean, it's like you have to have a lot of awareness and you have to be instinctive and in, 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 in jello. You know, one thing that he is, he is a football player. And so, you know, as a freshman, he was able to go in there and play that because he is instinctive. He, he, he does know how to find the ball and, and he's, you know, very competitive. He's tough. So, uh, and then you're trying to find at least three guys that can play that position. So it's very important. I mean, Ross, De Ross Ailes is our special teams coach, but he also works with the Nichols because uh, he he's really he's a linebacker coach by trade. So that's a that's a good role uh, where those guys can actually get some specialized individual coaching in practice and in the meetings. Coach, you talk about the leadership and the quarterback position a little earlier. How have you liked that position as far as when adversity has faced them during this camp? And how much is that, how they handle that, go into your final decision when you make the final decision and lose the starter? Yeah, it's going to be important. I mean, body language is big. You know, being able to go on to the next play because everyone's, wa everyone's watching the quarterback and the, and the head coach. Like when something bad happens, everybody's going to turn and look at me. Everybody's going to look, we're on offense, everybody's going to look at the quarterback, everyone. You know, so you have to have poise, you have to be able to go to the next play um, and have mental toughness. And so, you know, our guys are doing that um, and, and, they're getting, and they're getting better at that because, like, when you have guys that really want to be good um, and they're, you know, they're competing hard, you know, when things don't go right, I mean, guys are disappointed, right? Um, they want to win. You know, they want to win a job. They want to win that, that the down. They, I mean, they, they're competitive guys, and so, you know, there's a there's a fine you know there's a fine balance between like, you know, like how you you know how you uh, you know how you react after negative plays. You know, it's not like oh it's okay. Don't worry about it. No, it's not okay, and we do need to fix some things. You know, so it's not it's not uh, you know you don't want to have unearned positivity. At the same time, you got to be able to learn from the last play, good or bad, and then move on quickly. Like I told the quarterbacks, I mean, like how would it look if you threw an interception? You saw me bent over my head down for 10 seconds on the sideline. That'd be demoralizing to you and our team. I can't do it, so I got to learn from it, and I got to move on to the next play, and I got to help guys get better the next play. Same thing with the quarterback spot. So we're getting better at that. I, I like what I'm seeing so far. Mel, with about f or 15 practices left this fall camp, where do you want to see the team improve the most so you're not having times where you're putting your head down during practice? Can you say that first part? Where yeah. do you want to see the team improve the most with about 15 practices left in fall okay. camp? Uh, I haven't been in practice with my head down since we've, since we've been. And it rarely happens in games, so that's not part of what you're going to see from us. You know, What else you want to know? Just like where do you want to see the team improve? Yeah, well, we need to be able to run the ball better, you know, on a more consistent basis with all the groups that are in there. Uh, and that's tight ends blocking, and that's, and that's like, that's running backs. And listen, this season, when people ask me about the run game, if, it, if it's not, because it's not always not what you want, hey, I'm, I'm not going to put it all on the offensive line. I never have. Okay. Like today, I'm watching practice. Like, and if a tight end misses his block, everybody on the O-line has got their block, man, and we can't run the ball. Or if the running back doesn't hit the hole right, like we got a hole there. He doesn't hit it. I mean, the, the hole's not going to be there forever. We're playing power five football. I mean, so it takes all – and then, the, like, today, Gates made a huge block on Carter's big run. We, he, he doesn't even score if he doesn't go in there and dig out that safety. You know, so the run game and then you got to get the checks right. I mean, like, we're not just going to run the ball over here when they got too many guys over here. We need to run it over here or do something else. So it's a whole, it's a whole package, and everybody contributes, you know, to the run game. And we need to, you need to run the ball better. Um, but we're making progress. And then, you know, we need to stop the run better and split safety defense. Man, we just can't drop a safety down, you know, all the time and think we're going to stop the run that way. We need to be in split safety defense and play big boy ball and be able to, you know, knock guys back and control blockers and throw them on the ground and finish on the ball with maybe one linebacker in the box, you know. So we can take some pressure off our back end a little bit. I mean, we got a huge defensive line right now. If we can get these guys to the game, we should be stout. And we got our linebackers back, and they're nice-sized dudes, you know. So 
run game on both sides of the ball. We need to. Uh, I just want to know exactly what we're going, what to expect when we go out there and play in our first game. Right now, I'm not exactly sure. I, I, I'm sure every practice to a coach is important, but are these a big couple of weeks now as you go into your game week because players are tired, they've been practicing a couple of weeks. Is this where you start separating the men from the boys here in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean, hope. I mean, you know, every day we're trying to separate guys. We try to put them in positions, and, and like I haven't really seen anyone back down. I mean, I've actually seen guys get tougher uh, out there. So, um, you know what? You know, it's going to be interesting to see like how, how good we get. You know, how much improvement improvement we make like this week, and then in the scrimmage, because um, that's when I really start honing in on like who are the guys, like who can make plays. You know, and um, you may call that separating the men from the boys. Um, but, you know, we actually really need everyone to be good. Like, that's the only way we can have a good team is we can't just have, like, these 30 or 40 guys over here who can play and all these other, you know, we got 115 guys out there. You know, we travel like 70 dudes, right? So we can't have, like, you know, 30 or 40 good players and the rest of these guys can't play. We can, so we don't, we don't even coach like that. So I don't even want, like, the, the men over here and the boys over here, because that's how we get beat. I mean, we need everybody to be over here. You know, so that's every day is, that's why every day is important. And we can, we just can't like, you know, we can't stop coaching all of the guys. You know, like like coaching all the guys is not, that's not like a joke for us. I mean, because like you got like, uh, Khalil Majid was out there playing for us last year, like out there playing in games. He's a walk-on. You got uh, Justin White was out there like playing for us. I mean, we got guys out there playing for us. They're, you know, like true freshmen out there playing for us. You know, guys out there playing at 170 pounds. Like, you know, well, during that game, it don't matter. I mean, is he a man or a boy? It don't matter. He's out there, right? You know, so we got to have everybody ready to go. Not looking to try to separate guys. You know, we're trying to bring everybody along. All right, thank you, guys. Have a good one. Thank you.